This is part two of our presentation on managing human factors and quality management systems. Welcome back. We're talking about human factors in quality management systems. As we pointed out, the Swiss cheese model is that failures and their underlying causes basically happen at four levels in the organization. Organizational issues, supervisory issues, preconditions for failure, and at the lowest level, the failure level. And at each of these levels, there are holes in the defense that lead to the adverse event. So here's a real world story that we can use to illustrate the methodology for problem solving and organizational improvement. I was doing an audit in a very famous manufacturer of consumer items, and at one point in the process, there's a requirement for a part to be weighed using a scale. And of course, it's important that the scales be level so that they can give an accurate measurement. So I ran around with a guide and during the audit and checked to see if the scales were level and we went to about seven of these things and none of them were level. There's a requirement in the company's operating procedures that says the scales had to be level and a procedure for checking the scales and the scales weren't level and that was that. There's a requirement in the 2015 standard 7151 which states the organization shall determine and provide the resources needed to ensure valid and reliable results when monitoring or measuring is used to verify the conformity of products and services to requirements. There was a further organizational requirement that says that scales be level, the scales weren't level as required, so it was easy nonconformance. So the problem statement is the scales were not level, so why did this happen? The first why in the five why model is that the proper procedure for leveling the scales obviously was not being followed. So let's tackle the problem from the failure level in the Swiss cheese model. This is the operational technician level where people are actually doing work and having the failures. At the failure level, there are two main types of failure, which are errors and violations. The difference between these two is fairly obvious and based on intent. If it's an error, it's an unintentional. I mean, it's a violation. There is at least some intent to not do things the way they should have been done. So we have to do some investigation. First, let's talk about the errors. There are three main types of errors, decision-based, skill-based, and perceptual. In the case of a decision-based error, somebody is called on to make a decision and they make the wrong one. There are three types of this, rule-based decisions that say that if X happens, then do Y. There are choice decisions, which are experience and training-based. And there are ill-structured decisions, and these come under the category of problem-solving. And I would say that these three types of decision making are highly personality dependent and dependent on the ability of the decision maker and a whole book can be written just about this area. In the case of skill based errors, these are the ones we most commonly think of as human errors, which are attention failures or breakdowns in memory. I didn't notice, I forgot, I lost concentration. The final one is perception based in which there is an employee that misreads a label or ignores an alarm or misses some other signal that tells him or her to do something that they should or shouldn't have done. I know it's supposed to take a sample when the red light goes on, but I just didn't see it. The second type is a violation of which there are two types, routine and exceptional. And the difference is, was the situation condoned by management or not? In the first case, the routine violation, an employee knows that something is wrong and does it anyway. The employee ignores a standard operating procedure or a policy or invents their own procedure. We've all had experience with that, and in these cases, the violation is tolerated and or condoned by supervision, and in many cases, it's a conscious decision that allows this to go on. The other type of violation is exceptional, which is a lapse in operating procedure that's out of the ordinary and is not condoned by su uh, supervision or management. An example of this in the medical industry is extending a surgical procedure without patient consent or by keeping uncontrolled drugs on the floor. An example of this in manufacturing might be the use of an inappropriate tool or the adjustment of equipment in an unauthorized way or an unqualified employee performing a task or a violation of accepted good practices that happens and is out of the ordinary. So in the case of our example, starting from the lowest level of the Swiss cheese model is this. Was this an error or was it a violation? So you go out onto the floor, you interview the operators and ask them why they didn't level the scale and you get some combination of answers. But in this case, your answer is gonna be, I didn't know I had to, or yeah, I knew, but I forgot to check. In which case, it's probably a skill-based error. 
but it could just as easily have been a violation. In fact, if you interview the supervisor, many times they'll claim that the employee has been well trained and of course they knew better. And this denial can often be cultural. You have an incident, there's a lot of finger pointing, your first job will be to try to figure out the story. Can you see where retaining training records makes sense in this case? At the moment, we'll take the operator's word at face value and that takes care of our second why. But we aren't finished. When we come back, we'll follow the Swiss cheese model to the next level in the organization and find out if there are any preconditions or contributing factors that may have been part of the cause.